Tiridates III of Armenia was born in the early 250s AD. He was born to the current king of Armenia, whose name was Khosrow II. Unfortunately for Tiridates, his father would be assassinated in 252 AD, before Tiridates could even talk. The infant Tiridates, along with his sister, Khosrovdukt, were brisked away safely before they too could be murdered. As Tiridates was taken back to Rome, under the protection of the emperor, his kingdom was being split amongst those who had assassinated his father. The Sassanid Empire would swarm over Armenia and consolidate their rule there for the next 20 years by placing Artavestes IV, a puppet king, on the throne of Armenia. The man who had assassinated King Khosrow II would be captured and killed by Roman soldiers, although they decided to spare his adolescent son named Gregory. Tiridates and his sister would safely make it to the city of Rome, where the two fatherless siblings would be raised in a noble Roman fashion. Tiridates fell in love with Roman culture and was well versed in the favored Roman activity of conducting warfare. Although he mostly lived in Rome for his formative 18 years, he still followed the ancient religion of his homeland, Zoroastrianism. With help from his Roman host, Tiridates found himself at the borders of Armenia, a place in which he had no memories. He was the rightful heir to the throne, and it seemed like all of Armenia knew this to be true, as he quickly raised a sizable army to take back his father's inheritance by force. The pretender king Ardenes IV was easily kicked out by the Roman trained tactics of Tiridates. In 298 AD, Tiridates III liberated Armenia from Sassanid Persia and became the king. This 20-something year old experienced such easy wins against his rival that he decided to not just stop at liberation. So King Tiridates led an army southwards into the lands of Assyria. All the while, the weak and Sassanid Persian Empire was too distracted by their own civil wars to pay any attention to the return of this infant king. This conquest was going great, until the Sassanids got themselves together. Shah Narses would win the civil war and direct his army at Armenia shortly after his victory. This would result in a loss for Tiridates, who just couldn't keep up with the overwhelming Sassanid numbers. The Sassanids pushed Tiridates all the way back to Armenia, and eventually, they even retook most of Armenia from him. This would see the Roman race Tiridates ask for help from the current emperor of Rome, Diocletian. It only took around a year for Tiridates and Diocletian to liberate Armenia for the final time in Tiridates' life. In 299, Tiridates would come to Armenia and stay this time. King Tiridates was considered a protectorate under Rome, which amounted to the same role as a vassal. Being friends with Emperor Diocletian meant at least one thing. You had to hate the new monotheistic religion of Christianity that Diocletian commonly persecuted. Although the emperor would eventually change his policies to religious toleration, the persecution meant that Christians were running out of Rome and into neighboring Armenia for the hope of protection. One of these early Christians was a man named Gregory, but not just any Gregory. This Gregory was the son of Anak, the man who had assassinated Tiridates' father. Gregory thought to commend his father's sins by working for Tiridates as one of his military secretaries. Gregory had kept this as a secret from the king for a long time. I mean, who would want to have that awkward conversation? The awkward conversation would come after Tiridates asked Gregory to place a flower wreath at the feet of an Armenian god. When the Christian Gregory refused, he was ratted out by one of his friends. They told the king that Gregory was not only a Christian, but that his father had killed Tiridates' father. After Tiridates had heard the truth, he threw Gregory into a giant, pitch-black pit in which there was no escape. Tiridates grew more and more paranoid at the growing Christian population in Armenia. They seemed to flood from Jerusalem and the surrounding Roman-controlled area faster than Tiridates could fill the pits with them. One of these migratory Christian groups was around 35 virgin non-women, who were led by a woman named Gayan. On the insistence of Tiridates, the virgins found themselves at the court of the king, who viewed them as an oddity. One of these women had the name of Ripsim, and she was said to possess unequal beauty. King Tiridates asked Ripsen for her hand in marriage, and always, she refused the king. When it was clear that she would never become the wife of Tiridates, he did the only reasonable thing. So he proceeded to cut her tongue out, open her stomach up, and cut her into little tiny pieces, and spread her out. Then he gave similar punishments to the other 33 nuns. He allowed one to escape so that she could spread the news of the torture. Her name was Nino, and she would convert Iberia. I made a video about her right here if you want to check that out. Anyways, after Tiridates tortures and kills 34 virgins, it's clear that Tiridates has occurred some bad karma with God. This bad karma would hit Tiridates like a boar. No, really. He went hunting one day and turned into a freaking pig. This porked up tale is obviously fake. It is more likely that Tiridates either went mad and started acting like a pig, or he had some sort of seizure or stroke that disabled him. But it's a lot more fun if we just say that he turned into a pig. So this little piggy went to someone who might be able to help him. He needed a Christian and someone knowledgeable. Pig Tiridates knew where to find such a person. He just didn't know if said person would still be alive. So the pig king went to the pit of Korvarap, 
where he had thrown his former friend Gregory into for his father's actions. Somehow the male nourished and pale Gregory was still alive through the efforts of a good Samaritan who would throw a loaf of bread into Corvarap every day. As they hoisted the weak body of Gregory from the pit, Tiridates begged him for a cure. George complied and proceeded to cure Tiridates from his swine flu. Realizing the power of the Christian god, King Tiridates III immediately converted in 301 AD, becoming the first king to ever do so. But Tiridates didn't just stop there. He turned the whole state religion of Armenia from Zoroastrianism to Christianity, thus creating the first of thousands of future Christian states. Then he appointed Gregory as the head of the newly created Armenian Episcopalic Church. Spending so much time in the darkness and still being able to show Tiridates the light lended Gregory his nickname, Gregory the Illuminator. Being the first nation to embrace Christianity meant that a flood of Christian migrants would come to Armenia. It also meant that his population of Zoroastrianists would need converting. This would not go particularly smoothly, with the thousands of years of Zoroastrianism being thrown to the side. Plenty of Zoroastrianists would not accept this foreign religion, and some would even revolt against Tiridates. Tiridates would be forced to battle against his own people. The Zoroastrianists would lose this battle, and Tiridates would then go on a cultural genocide. To bring this new god, he believed that he had to kill the old ones. So he destroyed countless numbers of Zoroastrian texts, temples, and statues, and even erased the accomplishments of his Zoroastrian ancestors. Throughout the rest of Tiridates' 32-year reign, he worked hard to firmly establish the Christian faith in his unique nation of Armenia. He would eventually be poisoned in 330 AD and die. Most likely, this poison was from a Zoroastrianist. He would be succeeded by his son, Khosrow of the Third. King Tiridates III contribution on world history is incredible. He was the first king to not only accept Christianity, but also convert his whole state to it, a religion that is still the world's leader in total people today. If King Tiridates never converts, then it's possible that Christianity never rises to the heights that it does over the next 17,000 years.